and welcome. This month we have been looking at discipleship, making disciples. Today I want to look at sending out or being sent out the Jesus way. The first week we looked at knowing Jesus before we can make him known. Of course, that is the most important thing we can do as disciples of Christ. Unless we know who he is, how can we communicate who he is to people who don't fully understand who he is? I know there's too many who he is as in there, but it is important. And I'm trying to stress a point that unless we understand Jesus, it'll be very difficult for us to tell others about him. The second week we looked at love. Loving others and being loved in our communities the Jesus way. How did he do it? How effective was he? Now remember his love is unconditional, has no limitations, is not exclusive but inclusive. So how can we do that today in the societies that we live in? The third week we looked at teaching and being equipped. Of course we all need to learn by studying the scriptures, by talking to God to help us be prepared so that we are effective in the way we communicate his message to others. And today, as I said earlier, we're looking at sending out or being sent out the Jesus way. So perhaps it's no surprise that I'm going to try and find scriptures in the Bible that will show us some of the examples of Jesus sending out uh, his disciples. So we are going to land in the book of Luke and we're going to look at two chapters within Luke, chapter 9 and chapter 10. The message between these two chapters is pretty much the same. However, chapter 9 looks at Jesus sending out his 12 disciples. And then in chapter 10, we see that being extended by an additional 72 disciples. Why? Because there's so much work to be done. And we will see that as we read these two chapters. So let's start with chapter 9. We're going to read verses 1 to 6. And this is what he says. One day, Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. So we not power and authority being given to them. Not their own power, but that given to them by Christ. Verse 2, then he sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Important words to tell everyone. Be inclusive, not exclusive. 3, take nothing for your journey, he instructed them. Don't take a walking stick, a traveler's bag, food, money or even a change of clothes. Wherever you go, stay in the same house until you leave town. I am going to provide what you need. Don't let the lack of provisions stop you or restrict you from going out to do his will, to share his message. Four, and if a town refuses to welcome you, Shake its dust from your feet as you leave to show that you have abandoned those people to their fate. So they began the circuit of the villages preaching the good news and healing the sick. Now I have combined one to six into those four, summarized into those four. So he warns them that where you go, you might find resistance. And if people refuse, leave them this message and move on. 
they're not in a good place. But it's important for them to listen and take the message you're sharing on board. Of course, the disciples, the 12th went out and they were very successful in sharing that message with those people in the villages they came across. So successful that these people wanted to know more. Word spread. Those who were sick came and they wanted to be healed. They followed them. They wanted to know more about this Jesus. So they gathered in numbers to hear more from this Jesus that had been shared by the disciples. As a consequence, we see Jesus perform miracles. We see him feeding over 5,000 who had gathered with very little food, but performing a miracle with that little food so he could feed all of them. We see him healing the boy who had been demon possessed. Again, another miracle. Here is the evidence of this man who isn't just a man. He is something special. He is unique. He is the son of God. And of course, Jesus does this knowing very well that he is going to get in trouble. He knows what is already being planned, but yet he goes through with it. So as you can see, him warning his disciples when they go out, they may meet resistance and they need to be prepared for it because he himself knows what is coming. So that is nine. Now let's look at 10. So 10, we're going to briefly pick up some of the key verses from verses 1 to uh, 23. I'm going to read briefly, fairly quickly as well. Read with me. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending out like lambs against, among the wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. And if someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal those who are ill and tell them the kingdom of God, of God has come near to you. But you, when you enter a town and you're not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet, be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, if it, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Wherever, whoever listens to you, listens to me, and whoever rejects you, rejects me. But whoever rejects me, rejects him who sent me. So the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. So here we see Jesus equipping and sending out an additional 72 disciples because the work is so great and there are a few people to do it. So 72 more are sent out, but they're not sent out one by one, they're sent out in pairs and that is very important. We each have a gift that has been given to us. Maybe some of us have multiple gifts. But using the analogy of one body, many parts, when we come together, we are more effective because we bring the different gifts that we have. And together, we become more powerful with him holding us together. You're not on your own. You've got someone else, go with someone else, whether physically or just praying for you before you set off. 
come together, gather and pray and send whoever or the group that needs to go out. We need to become better at doing that. But remember, you're never on your own. We at Follow Jesus is an example of teaching, healing, sharing, feeding, caring, and the list goes on and on and on. He didn't just go there and hang out and then leave, but he did so much more. But the central point here is about being able to share the gospel, share his love with those you come in contact with. Now, it may not be easy out there. There will be resistance, there will be rejection. The devil may have his own schemes stacked up against you. But that should not hinder you from doing his will. From going through with the call that he has given you. When you encounter resistance or rejection, don't let it affect you. But forgive those who come against you and move on. Now remember, we are not in the business of forcing anyone, of manipulating anyone, of deceiving anyone, using any means to make someone come into the kingdom of God. Our job is to simply share his message of love. And once we've done that, let's not carry the negativity with us wherever we go. That is only to create a stumbling block for you is an additional burden that you could do without carrying. Leave it behind instead and carry on with your journey. Remember, we are empowered already by him. Now we are empowered to do his will, not our own, not yours or mine, but his. If we focus on our own, and then we will get it wrong and we'll make a mistake. That is not the business we are in when we are sent out. Don't worry about provisions, as we've been told. God has already taken care of the needs ahead of us. He has prepared a way. He, had put, he has put people and provisions in the way already so that when we need it, we will get what we need at the right time. So don't let the lack of those hold you back or restrict you in what you've been set out to do. And also we are reminded when you're offered food or drink, don't be afraid. Why should you be afraid? It is one way of building relationships and in trust, letting people know that you are interested in them and they are not double standards. After all, God is already there and has protected what is being offered to you. He has prepared the way ahead, but you need to stay in tune with him. Don't suddenly go on to doing your own thing, preaching your own gospel, interpreting the way things the way you want to interpret them. Always tap into him. Stay in tune, rely on him, trust him to show you the way. Remember, you're not on your own. He is always there when you need him. So why not use him all the time to help you be as effective as you possibly can be? Upon arrival, we are reminded we are to bless and pass peace onto those we come in contact with. Now, this is a personal experience that I have even today when I go back to see my family back in the village. When you go from house to house, when you go to visit someone, the first thing you do when you enter their house is to pray first. You don't greet them first, but you pray them first. You don't make any physical contact until you have prayed. Now, prayer is an acknowledgement of God's presence. Or if someone doesn't know God, is to remind them that actually this God is there even for them. They've got nothing to lose. So prayer is very important when you go into people's houses. Peace, blessings that we go with, pass them 
to those people you come in contact with. Those who refuse his message of salvation are worse off than the city of Sodom. Now we know what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Here, we're being reminded that the consequences of refusing Christ are so great. Why would I want to miss out on a personal loving relationship with the Creator, the Almighty God? Eternity is at stake here. So it's not just that I might get destroyed or a town or a city might get destroyed. It's more than that. And let's not dwell or focus on the physical destruction, but there's a spiritual destruction that we're going to experience, or those people are going to experience if they refuse God. So another thing is that our reach as we go out is no longer limited to the villages. We're no longer limited to our neighborhoods, our communities, or our town only. Today, we are blessed with so much more. We have technology that allows us to communicate the message of God worldwide. Whatever you say can be had with someone, by someone on the other side of the, of the planet. If by hearing that, they turn to the kingdom of God, then that's great. So let's not limit ourselves by saying, I don't have anyone around me or all the people around me are already believers because we can still share that message with someone else, be it at work, in our shopping area, uh, on social media, Facebook, whatever that might be. You will reach someone out there. So let's not be limiting, but be prepared to do that. So here's a few things maybe that you can do. Just as I summarize, one is we need to gain confidence through knowing who Jesus is. It is not about you or through your own power, but through his power. Be ready to do his command and don't delay or wait for tomorrow. Because tomorrow may be too late for that person you keep passing by every single day. It is not you who saves, but it is Jesus his grace and mercy. So if you think you're in the business of saving, then you need to have a conversation with God because that's not our business. Ours is just to share his love. Ascending is about following his example, reflecting him and sharing the good news through what we say, what we do. We need to be include, inclusive and not limited to just a few or only limited to the people we really like or that part of the town that we really like. Jesus was inclusive and we need to be that as well. And remember, it is not about adding people to your local church. So don't be disappointed when you do not see the church growing in numbers that is not our business. Our business is to share God's message with people so they can come into his kingdom, so they can develop a personal relationship with him, not necessarily to fill our church buildings, to make us feel so good and happy. That isn't what we're in the business of doing. Sending out is about that message reaching to someone so they can have a relationship with God. We want to see the kingdom of God growing. And that does not necessarily mean our local church growing in numbers. I hope you find this useful in some way. Be encouraged and go out there spreading his love with those people you come in contact with. Be blessed. Mm -hmm.